Welcome uh, to everyone tonight. Uh, this is the first uh, uh, episode, I suppose, if you want to call it that, of It's a Brain Thing. Um, let me give a little background uh, to you guys tonight, because I think there's some new faces out there, and because it's the first one of the school year, um, I thought I'd give, you know, kind of introduce myself and explain a little bit about why I do these things, and also some kind of exciting stuff about uh, how you can also catch these things uh, on the internet and on TV. Uh, first of all, my name is Dr. David Henley. I'm a psychiatrist by training, which is a medical doctor that goes through medical school and all that, and then can prescribe medications and learns a lot about the brain, spends a lot of time seeing patients and learning about brain illnesses. And one of the reasons that I do these talks is uh, uh, there's a, as you guys know, there's, there's a huge stigma in our society about the brain. You know, a lot of folks, and what, what is stigma? Stigma comes from when people don't understand something. So in the old days, uh, people didn't understand somebody acting a little differently. They thought they were possessed by the devil or they had some other, you know, something else going on. So when we don't understand something, we don't tend to, we don't t treat those folks very well or we don't, uh, we stigmatize things. So my um, idea for this talk was there is a lot of knowledge out there about, you know, science is, is there for some of these illnesses of, of the brain. And, you know, somebody is probably somebody that knows something about it ought to get up and start spreading the word a little bit, you know. So I had the idea of, you know, having these little talks in the community and kind of open to anyone that wants to come and has an interest. And, um, and I'm trying to reach as broad of an audience as possible. I do these like usually the third Tuesday of every month through the school year. Uh, this one's a little off. My wife's 40th birthday was last Tuesday, so I would have been seriously in the doghouse if I had done a talk on that night. So I pushed this one back, but from now on, it'll be every, the third Tuesday of every month. Um, I, last year, I started getting them on uh, WCTV uh, out of Wayne County, out of uh, the Richmond. It's in IU East. I think it's uh, through IU East. Um, and they are showing those Monday, uh, I think Monday evening starting at 8 o'clock, and it's every four hours till Tuesday at 4 p.m. Um, and so they've been nice enough to, to show them. And that reaches, I think he said, he told me about 20,000 households uh, in Wayne County, which is, you know, it's pretty good. And then and I, I started thinking even outside the box further, and I thought, how about trying to get these on the Internet? And I had a friend who, has anybody heard of YouTube? Some of the younger folks probably have. He has nobody's ever heard of YouTube? There's a website, you got to check it out, it's kind of, it's entertaining, mildly entertaining, but it's, uh, you've heard of MySpace, anybody heard of that? MySpace is it's a blog site, I guess, where folks get on and they kind of talk about their lives or the world or whatever, they give their opinions on things, and it's just everyday folks like us. Well, YouTube is the video version of that. So folks set up a camera, film themselves talking about something, sometimes they film kind of goofy things, you know, that, that, uh, that I wouldn't advocate doing in real life, but... Uh, you know, I had the idea, well, you know, it's free to do that. Why not get these, why not, you know, taping these anyway? Why not put them on there? And then I could reach people all over the world, basically. If you, have, if you have Internet access, you can get this, you can get this information. And sure enough, uh, and it's something I wanted to mention in this one. This will be posted on the Internet after, you know, a few days here. Um, I wanted to say, to, a, to say hello to a guy in China. I got a nice message from a guy who uh, uh, admitted that he had uh, panic disorder, and he watched the panic disorder video that I put out, and uh, he said, you know, I saw that you had mentioned you wanted to reach as broad an audience as possible, and uh, I really uh, got a lot out of your video and wanted to say thank you and uh, that you had reached the People's Republic of China, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the other thing is uh, a guy from Australia uh, suggested that I make these into podcasts, which are... Uh, I don't know if the younger folks know what those are, but basically if you have an iPod or an MP3 player, you can, I can convert these from a video file into an audio file, and then you can download them uh, and listen to them you know, on your way to work or whatever else. Because I, I kind of cover a lot of information in here, and it's kind of hard. You, know, you don't want to take notes. You know, none of us want to do that. We're out of school now. We don't, we don't, that's, not, that's no fun. So, so you don't need to take too many notes. If you want, you're welcome to, but, uh, but you, can always, you can always catch it later on the Internet. Um, so anyway, that's sort of the exciting stuff. I have a website for the, the YouTube thing on the back, and I'll show you that towards the end a little bit. Um, I have covered, I think tonight is the last major type of psychiatric or brain illness that I, that I had wanted to cover that I hadn't yet. Um, and what we're going to start doing is, um, I didn't get all of them on tape. So there's one on, on substance abuse, which I, I need to redo because I didn't get it taped. So, and I want to get it on the internet and on the TV. So we're going to do that next month. Um, and then we're going to, I'll try to cover ADHD again if I can get my friend to come back and help me out with that since I'm not much of a child psychiatrist actually. Um, try to get her to come back and help me out with that one and we'll do uh, a couple of the other beginning ones that we did. And so those will be a little bit of repeats although it's been a year or so or more since I, since I did those. So. Um, that's kind of the, the scenario for the year. 
Tonight we were going to talk about, I wanted to talk about psychosis and psychotic disorders. Um, folks probably, I mean, what do you think of when you think, when you hear psychosis? Is that, what, what do folks think of? Have you guys heard of somebody being psychotic? I and mean, if somebody says, oh man, they're psychotic, what is that? Do you think crazy or what do you think? A lot of folks think crazy. I kind of hate that word. I, I don't really like the word crazy because the heck is crazy. It just means they're acting different than someone else. But, and it's also a little bit, uh, it's kind of mean, you know, like what does it mean? You know? uh, it puts somebody down a little bit. So um, I always prefer to call things what they are. And after tonight, you guys will be able to say that person has psychosis because you'll know what that is. Psychosis, in, in a nutshell, um, is basically where somebody is not thinking in reality. Look at me, I'm getting brave. I thought I was going to do this without my notes. Um, it's basically where a person has, um, um, you know, they might have, they may, they may see something, they might hear something that other people can't hear. Um, they may have a thought uh, that something's happening, like, like a paranoid thought. Somebody's out to get me, somebody's going to hurt my, my family or myself. Um, so. The, their thoughts are not based in reality. When you say, you know, and that's always a little bit subjective, right? So when I say not based in reality, what I mean is there's no evidence that these things are occurring. And uh, but the person that's having these thoughts or these seeing these things or hearing these things, they think absolutely it's happening, without a doubt it's happening. I mean, they believe it. So when you talk to the person about it and you try to challenge them and show them evidence that it's not occurring, they don't like that so much. They don't have any insight that they can't see that point of view at all. Um, there are uh, other things that occur sometimes with psychotic disorders, especially, um, and, it was, and sometimes with psychosis, and that's the, the person's speech can be unusual, can be incoherent or unusual in some way, and then their behavior can be really agitated or really uh, sort of disorganized. They do a lot of things that, without much purpose. Um, now, why do we care about psychosis? I always ask that, you know, why, why do we care about these illnesses that I'm talking about? Obviously, it kind of interferes with function, right? I mean, you're not going to be able to, if, if all you can think about is somebody who's out to get you and you're up all night and you're looking around at the cars driving by and you're thinking those folks are spying on me and I just know it's just a matter of time until he comes and hurts me in some way or my family, you're not sleeping well, you, you're not going to be able to focus on work for sure, school, um, relationships, so it's, it definitely interferes with your day-to-day -day life and your day-to-day -day function. And, um, you know, when it gets severe, the person... You know, either they end up in the hospital if there's somebody that cares about them enough to get them to the hospital, uh, or unfortunately, some of these folks will end up homeless. And you know, I know you guys have probably been into like downtown Indianapolis or Chicago or someplace, and you'll see folks that are you know they're homeless and they're talking to someone who's not there. You know, those are probably folks with schizophrenia um, and, or some other type of psychotic illness. They're obviously talking to something that's not there, but to them, they hear it. And, you know, unfortunately, those are folks that, uh, you know, that nobody's, you know, nobody's picking up and forcing them into treatment. And they won't get treatment on their own because they don't think there's anything wrong. And we'll go into that in a minute as to why they don't think there's anything wrong. Um, what are the symptoms of psychosis? Has anybody heard of hallucination? That's kind of a big, that's sort of a, one of the most common types or symptoms of psychosis. Uh, uh, a hallucination is where, and it can be any kind of hallucination, okay? So it can be... Something that you see, something that you hear, that you taste, that you feel, you know, any of these things, even smell. So um, hallucinations are where you see or taste or whatever, something that no, nobody else can, can see or hear, okay? So hang on, to the, hang on to that thought about hallucinations. Then they sort of divide the hallucination into whatever, you know, what symptom it is. So if it's auditory, what is that, guys, you know? Something you hear, right? So an auditory hallucination is something, it can be a, it can be a sound, it can be a... a uh, some, uh, it can, act, can actually be a formed voice. It could be a voice as clear as you're hearing my voice now, except that there's no one around, okay? And when folks have auditory hallucinations, those can be, they can be familiar to the person. They could be like a the sort of you know, family member or somebody who's abused them in the past or something like that. They can also be unfamiliar. They can be childlike, uh, you know, children's voices. They can be adults. They, they, they take all different forms and, and have all different um, manners, I suppose, about them. Sometimes they're very aggressive and they're very uh, hostile to the person. Sometimes they command the person to do something that they